Hey guys, today we're doing the top five most common mistakes people make while trying to go pro or play competitive Fortnite. Um, I'm gonna teach you guys how to improve in this video. If you like it, make sure to leave a like and uh, enjoy the video. So number one is you're not taking accountability for your mistakes. When people wanna go pro, the number one thing you need to do is you need to learn from your mistakes. And when you don't take accountability for your mistakes, that's a very, very big problem. And it's kind of hard to take accountability for your mistakes, right? Because you have to know that you did something wrong. And people don't want to accept that there's something wrong with them. But if you make a mistake, you need to identify that mistake and you need to fix it. And a way to improve on this is honestly, VOD reviewing and knowing how to have an unbiased point of view. And one way that you can do that is if you have a friend, you can VOD review with them, right? You can get in Discord every night, VOD review with your friends, VOD review with multiple people, and you point out their mistakes and you help them realize their mistakes. And this shouldn't be personal, right? Don't make it personal. If your friend tells you you did something wrong, don't take it personal, but just think about what they said and apply that to your game, maybe, if you know that you did something wrong, and just think about how to prevent that mistake from happening again. Because if you make the same mistake twice, you're not improving and you're not gonna get good and you're not gonna be able to go pro or achieve your goals, whatever your goals are. The number two most common mistake I see from so many people on console, PC, stuff like that is, and this is a surprising one that you guys aren't gonna expect, is visual audio. People put visual audio on, and this, and if you guys don't know what visual audio is, I'll show you. Visual audio is right here, it's visualized sound effects. And I'll turn that on and I'll go in game and show you guys what it does. But basically it sums up to visualizing what happens on the audio on your screen. And I'll tell you why that's bad, but let me show you in game really quick. Uh, if you guys can't tell, this chest one is to my left, right? And you can see that on the screen. But if you guys can listen, it is not showing like in my ears that it's to the left, okay? You can't hear the 3D aspect of audio. You can only hear it coming from a singular point, And that's actually like from the center of your head in game, which is kind of weird. If I turn to the right, can't tell that it's to my right. Can only tell if it's in front of me. But you can see it, and that's another problem, right? It lowers your FPS, that's a problem. It lowers your FPS, and that's true. Unless you are actually hearing impaired, there's no reason to use visual audio. I promise you, no reason. It is one of the worst things you can use. Do not use it unless you actually have hearing problems. It ruins your FPS, and it makes your audio impossible to hear um, accurately. Number three is overestimating your skills. This one basically is just, you know, overestimating what you can do. Now, confidence is important. I tell people to have confidence. This might seem like it contradicts each other, but it, it doesn't. Being confident is not the same as being delusional. And overestimating your skills is de delusional. If you overestimate what you can do, you can get yourself into some really bad situations and it will impair you from improving. And you don't want that to happen if you have any goals of going pro or whatever in this game. Overestimating yourself can put you in some really bad situations. It can also make you look kind of dumb. Let's say you're VOD reviewing, right? Like I mentioned previously. Let's say you're VOD reviewing and somebody tells you you did something wrong, but you think you're the best player on the planet, right? So you think, oh no, I didn't do that wrong, but they're right. You, you don't wanna think that, you don't wanna overestimate what you can do. So avoid overestimating your skills, that's a very bad thing to do, you don't wanna do that. A way to prevent this is being realistic with yourself, but also being confident at the same time. And that's a hard balance to strike, but if you're good enough, or if you want it bad enough, you'll figure out that balance. It's a pretty hard balance, but uh, you, should guys, you guys should be able to figure it out if you really want it bad enough. Number four is having a negative mindset. This is something, again, that I see a lot. How do you expect to improve or go pro or go semi-pro in this game if you have a negative mindset? You do not want a negative mindset. Having a negative mindset affects you improving a lot. It will completely stop any improvement that you have until you get a better mindset. It'll stop you from finding new teammates. And teammates are very important. As you guys know, the main game mode now is trios. So you need teammates. You don't want to have a negative mindset. People won't want to play with you with a negative mindset. So don't have one. One way to prevent having a negative mindset is, and this sounds kind of dumb, right? But you got to find inspiration, okay? You got to find inspiration of people who have good mindset. If you want to have a good mindset, you don't want your inspiration being like Cloud9 Avery. You want your inspiration to be like uh, Booga, right? Great mindset, sometimes, depends. A lot of pros have a good mindset. A lot of people don't have a good mindset. It's just how it is. Also like looking at inspiration from other sources, like if you look at basketball, look at people who work hard in that, like maybe LeBron James or whatever. I'm just giving examples of where you can find inspiration to have a positive mindset about the game and about what you do. Number five is having a drop spot, right? So. People think that you want to copy the pros is what people think, but you don't. One of the things I see the most is, in case you guys didn't know this, big POIs, like 
they are not contested as much as you think in the later rounds of tournaments. And some of you guys aren't making the later rounds of the tournaments, but they don't get that contested until later in the tournament. So if you're in like the first like, game of a tournament, it just, the tournament just started, try going tilted maybe. Try going like a big POI, it might pay off, you might get it uncontested. And it's the same thing with finding an actual POI. You don't want to have like shambles loot, but you also want to fight too much. So I wouldn't make tilted your main POI, but having places like sweaty or um, craggy being your main POI, that's pretty good, Misty too. You wanna have a good drop spot. You also wanna have a few different drop spots just in case one isn't really working out for you, you're not feeling it. You wanna have backup drop spots. I have some backup drop spots. Be comfortable with multiple places on the map and that'll make you a much, much better player. And you can do this by just playing arena pretty much and playing um, off spawn fights and stuff like that. There's some videos that I'll probably make in the future telling you guys how to get a good drop spot. So look out for those in the, in the near future. I'll probably make some of those. That's the last one is having a good drop spot. If you guys liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to turn the notice on too. I wanna to get to 100,000 subscribers pretty soon. And that's why I'm putting out so much content for you guys. I'd appreciate that a lot. If we got to that within the next few months, that'd be actually so huge for me. I'm gonna be putting out content on a regular basis. Every, every other day, I think, is when I'm gonna be putting out content and maybe some bonus videos in between. So yeah, peace out guys.